All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to try to make a new video here. Uh, just got done with the, um, when well, I didn't just get done, I literally just went to sleep, but uh, I got done with the podcast with um, Tello, and then I basically went to bed, and I woke up, and he's got a new video on, like, some fresh data mine, like, gear and stuff, and so I've just been sitting here, like, looking through it going, dear God. Um, so the things that are on my radar after looking through the gear are, um, the Baron Rivendare weapon has always been on my radar. Um, her weakness historically has always been that she doesn't have stats. Um, but they gave the, the Baron Rivendare weapon, um, stats, uh, quite a while ago. Um, she also used to have a spell power ratio, uh, be behind the, her healing ticks. I have no idea if that's still in the game. If it's still in the game, then it's probably a weapon 100% uh, worth going after. I forget what its movement speed increase is. I think it's like 10%, uh, but it doesn't stack with other things, of course. So, it, you know, it's only like a, it's a small percent movement speed increase. Uh, I really don't know uh, much about that weapon. Uh, other weird weapons on the list is um, something that might be a typo. Um, is this damn Thane weapon. Uh, the Fallen Thane weapon, where it's like, oh, I just have 22 stamina on me. I'm a 1.5 speed one-handed weapon with a lifesteal proc. And I'm like, uh, all right, I'll take that to the bank. Thank you very much. Um, but you might think it's overpowered. Um, but if we stop and think about this for a second, I mean, Edward the Odd is in the game, right? Uh, okay. <laughs> so, um... At least there's something around that is is making me scratch my head and is somewhat competitive with with Edward the Odd, just because its standing HP is so insane. Um, there also uh, let's think about this. There is uh, bu -bu 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 Ebon. All right, so the the Ebon Fist has been changed slightly since Classic WoW, and you can see nothing about her on the tooltip has actually changed. Um, what they, pr when you, when you see stuff like this in the game, what's probably happened is they've gone in, they've altered the proc rate of, of, of the weapon. So, um, Ebon Fist or, um, Ebon Hand as I like to call it. Uh, oh, I guess, yeah, it used to be Ebon Hand now it's Ebon Fist. I guess it's better to be fisted than to be handed. Um, according to Blizzard. Uh, um, but. Uh, she used to have like an absolutely uh, horrifyingly abysmal proc rate. She was like 3% proc chance uh, base, which was absolutely terrible. Her shadow bolts are, are chat as hell compared to like, let's say, uh, Kari, no, 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 blah, 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 uh, Deathbringer, for example. Um, but she did, uh, well, she was a proc on hit weapon that, that comes with stamina and she has fire resist on her. So she had her weird little niche of being like abyss one handed weapon. Um, also, being at 2.5 speed was not the worst thing in in the world. Um, so she's still kind of bis. Hopefully, they bumped her proc rate up to like at least 5%, bringing it in line with uh, most other weapons. Um, also, hopefully, they reduced her cost because, dear fucking God, was this thing expensive to make uh, when I tested it in Classic World of Warcraft for you guys. I was like, oh, geez. Um, so Ebon Hand is there. Uh, what else is there to talk about? Uh, the Rivendare Blade, the Ebon Hand Blade. Uh, I mentioned some other stuff in the Discord, I think. Let me see if I can find it here really fast. Uh, Hammer of the Thane. Yeah, okay, I mentioned that. There was some other weapon that... Uh, yeah, a few of the other weapons I mentioned in the podcast uh, that were tickling me pink were was uh, Faithbringer. Boop, boop, boop. Uh... Yeah, Faithbringer, almost a perfect weapon uh, for a Paladin in Classic World of Warcraft. Almost. Um, the ideal weapon for you as a Paladin is something the equivalent of like a Grand Marshal's uh, Demolisher. Yeah, is like the equivalent of like a Grand Marshal's Demolisher. Where it's like stamina, intellect, but like a, a thick chunk of stamina and a thick chunk of intellect. Um, followed up by uh, uh, plus healing on the weapon in conjunction with not having actual f melee damage being nerfed. And uh, Faithbringer is actually a weapon that is that is very close to that. So you can see here that the Lava Dredger, uh, by contrast, um, she's also very thick. She, she's got everything you want, except she's missing um, uh, a good base weapon damage, right? She's got like 57 weapon damage. Um, which is fine because if this thing uh, had like a, a 60, 
uh, I want to say 67 weapon damage, like a, a normal molten core weapon, uh, this thing would be pretty disgusting. So, for example, if I scroll down, oh, that's a two-hander, yeah, yeah, Imperium Demolisher, main hand, no, I guess that doesn't count. Um, yeah, this thing would be absolutely disgusting, but that's kind of the, the dream weapon for, for a paladin it is a, the equivalent of like a Grand Marshal's, uh, Demolisher. Um, there's one that comes out in Nax that I can't quite remember. It's like, I think it's, yeah, the Maul of the Redeemed Crusader. Um, also damn near a perfect weapon. You can see it's got 29 stamina, uh, 24 intellect, and uh, she has, uh, a damage and healing. Um, 3.6 weapon speed, 84 or 85 weapon damage, uh, almost a perfect weapon uh, for Season of Discovery Paladin, just has spell damage rather than plus healing. Um, the sad truth is you scale better, um, uh, unless you're specifically a Holy Shock Paladin, uh, you scale better off of plus healing than you do off of uh, spell power um, as a Paladin. Uh, like, I literally did the math, it's like, you know, 200 spell power is like, oh, my Holy Shock does an extra... Uh, 7.5 DPS, woo. Um, maybe if I'm using Seal of Righteousness or Seal of Command, it gets a little bit more spell power damage, but we're about, you're about, I'm about to show you what, what plus healing does um, in this stupid game. Okay, so that's me looking at the, uh, the weapons. Uh, when I looked at the, this is just a cursory area, I haven't looked at things like too terribly in deep. Uh, when I looked at the trinkets, there were a lot of really good, like really um, sexy trinkets um, which everyone's going to kind of go nuts for, uh, click patch. Um, there's stuff out here that's like, oh, by the way, uh, increase healing done by spells and effects. So yeah, okay, 150 for two minutes, over 20 seconds. That's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, the one that really stood out to me was, uh, oh, by the way, you get to run faster on a relatively short cooldown. The molten, uh, the molten core, um, also stands out to me a little bit, but I think this is the item for rag. I could be wrong about that. I don't know. Uh, it's the fact that it does a ton of fi AoE fire damage when you die, which for a Reckoning Paladin is absolutely hilarious if we put that on it. It reminds me of like some uh, Diablo 2 um, um, on-death builds, uh, which I thought was funny. Uh, Shard of the Scale is absolutely insane if you can put it on uh, on your Paladin. Holy shit. The, uh, the MP5-1 needs to be buffed because the... Um, the mana per five one is so nuts that if it wasn't unique, I would consider wearing two of these these things. This thing is is insanity. Like like the, the, these trinkets uh, back to back were all, always amazing, but I mean Jesus. Um, in the future, these might be bis trinkets, believe it or not. But I'm not really parting very well with the stamina and the fire resist, um, as you're about to see. Uh, I'm not sure how the, the, the plus healing works. Um, I can do it really fast here. Um, we used to have 600 plus healing on this build. Let me uh, get uh, both shards going here. Yeah, okay. So we got, we got both shard effects. I scroll down. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Um, so when set bonuses or items tell you things like they have plus healing and they have spell power on them, they don't add together. It just takes the highest of the two for healing purposes. So my healing only, uh, my plus healing only went up by 55 here. Um, it didn't go up by uh, like 80. If it went up by 80, then I would definitely take that to the bank. But since it's not going to do it, I'm not taking it to the bank. Um, obviously, Essence of the Pure Flame is Biss. Uh, rogues are going to hate that with a Fiery Passion. Rogues are really going to hate Essence of Pure Flame combined with the new... Um, uh, I should know this name. Hmm... Uh, yeah, the, the Worm Thalak. Uh, specifically, this one, uh, Heart of the Scale. Uh, 17 Stamina, 10 Fire Resist. Use Increased Fire Resistance by 20 and deals 20 Fire Damage to anyone who strikes you in a melee attack for 5 minutes on a 10-minute cooldown. Um, Heart of the Scale always was amazing, uh, believe it or not. Uh, but in Season of Discovery, she's kind of a, a secret little uh, blue chad down here. There's a bunch of other little blue chad things uh, that are like, whoa, what? Um, uh, there's one down here that's like a ton of nature resistance, which is pretty pimp. Um, on a relatively short cooldown, there's one that makes you run faster on a relatively short cooldown. Uh, that's harmful fire effects. No. Uh, yeah, this is the nature resist one. 10 stamina, increase your nature resist by 90. Effects last for 30 seconds, three, three minute cooldown. Um, if this is not purgeable, then she is absolutely amazing. If she is purgeable, then sad face. Uh, why that's amazing is because uh, Urshock really starts to suffer 
if you have any kind of nature resistance in conjunction with um uh with uh improved concentration aura oh yeah here we go um 25 uh 20 frost resist which isn't the worst stat in the world increase run speed by 40 percent for 10 seconds on a three minute cooldown pretty goddamn good uh pretty goddamn good trinket and there's a bunch of other little trinkets here that are absolutely amazing uh, yep, 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 yep. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Uh, but let's go back to what we had before. We're just going to put on the nice, thick boy, uh, Chad. Um, easy to get. I, I like gearing up paladins to be easy to get. You know, don't break the bank. Don't need to be a sweat lord. All that stuff. Wait, 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 wait. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Time out, time out, time out. The Anixia Blood Talisman is not a unique... I don't think she drops off Anixia. I want to say it's a quest reward, and therefore it wouldn't have to be unique. I'm going to assume that's a quest reward, because if I can use two of those damn things, I might thoroughly consider it. Uh, yeah, anyways, we'll go with uh, this thing right here. All right, so um, the P new PvP gear and the set bonuses and everything is very weird, and so you basically have to have a conversation about this. Uh, why is my HP so low? What's going on here? Was I, was I dicking around with something? Like, what's happening here? Uh, oh yeah, okay, I still gotta share the scale. I'm a moron. Okay, that makes sense. Give me a talisman. Okay, cool. Alright, so, let's have a conversation here really fast. So, uh, I've been looking into, like, which gearing is better, right? Like, hey, what, hey, what are you doing back there? Um, do we go with a, a tier one gearing or do we do a, um, a PVP gearing or do we do like a hybrid of PVP and soul forged or do we do a, uh, some weird wackadoo hybrid of tier one, a PVP and soul forged. It's looking like potentially you're going to want to do a hybrid of tier one. Uh, I'm talking like a, a two to four piece, uh, tier one. Um, a two to four piece, uh, a PVP, and then, uh, uh, like at least a two piece, um, soul forge. The reason it big for the two piece soul forge is the two set bonus is, um, increase, uh, plus healing, uh, from spells by up to 40. Um, it says up to, uh, 40, but really it just increase your uh, plus healing by 40. So the two set bonus on soul forge is amazing. Some of the, uh, the thicker pieces of soul forge are really good. Um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but let's just look at it from a raw, like, uh, stats perspective. So I basically, uh, 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 the, the tier one option, this is option one. She's got like 4,500 HP when you use a wild blossom berry for a uh, plus 10, uh, food buff. Highly advised. She has 164 standing HP, which means she, she hits the soft cap, uh, break point and has some, um, spell pen, uh, uh, immunity as well. So some counter spell pen to that. Um, she can go improve concentration aura, but she only has 366 plus healing. That's this gear right here, which is like a six piece tier one, followed up by a two piece uh, tier one. Um, her plus healing is remarkably low, but her HP is quite high at 5,400, and her uh, standing fire resist is absolutely amazing. Um, but here's the hybrid one. So this thing is using a four piece. Uh, PvP gear, followed by four piece, four piece Soul Forge, because there just wasn't anything better. Um, this would be the gear that uh, you might, or the, you might swap that out for like a a, a two piece tier two, um, for example. Uh, my bad, a two piece tier one. Uh, the problem, of course, with tier one here is that they are remarkably low um, on plus healing by comparison. And some of them don't really play all that well. Like, there, there's no Tier 1 Bracers that actually have uh, plus healing on them. So you're kind of stuck with these, like, shitty Soul Forge Bracers. Um, they're just kind of locked in there. Uh, replace this with, like, Tier 1, maybe. Like, a Lawbringer. Uh, you want the one that gives you specifically 100% uh, uh, proc chance in your judgments. Yeah. So you can see that you start picking up stamina and you start losing uh, plus healing very quickly. Let's just throw that down really fast so we can get get a, get a view of what she looks like. Uh, so now you have to choose between the, the fists or the boots. Uh, get fisted or get booted. Uh, the boots are low stamina but very, very high uh, uh, plus healing. 
Let's see here. Go Lawbringer. Handguards, I think. That's a block value one, bruh. That's the block value one, bruh. Uh, okay, so, yeah, you're going to lose... You're going to gain a lot of stamina. Uh, you're going to lose an ocean of plus healing on a build that... This build actually has a lot of plus healing on it. All right, so I gain a, I gain uh, seven stamina, uh, a little bit of fire resist. That's notable. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. Um, I lose a fair bit of plus healing. Uh, we'll compare that to the boots. Das boots. Scroll down. Lawbringer battle boots. That's not the right one. Um, right, so you can choose between the one that'll let uh, give you 100% proc chance on your, on your Judgment of Light or Judgment of Wisdom. And, of course, the other option is uh, the uh, uh, to have Crusader Strike on your Judgment of Light or Judgment of Wisdom. Both amazing options. Can't really tell which one I would choose at this point. Doesn't really matter. Um, we're just looking at the two-piece stuff going on right here. So here we lose... Yeah, here we lose... Uh, we pick up Shadow Resist, which is notable... We lose less plus healing, but we don't pick up fire resistance. And this build is already a little low on fire resist, so we're literally going to swap out the uh, the gloves, unfortunately. Uh, fire resist. I do believe that's the right one. Yeah, it is. Okay. Cool. All right, so now we got this weird hybrid mix. Fucking uh, two-piece tier one, uh, four-piece PvP, uh, two-piece... Uh, Soul Forge, and we could easily uh, um, lose uh, the two-step bonus uh, from the four-piece. Um, how do I put this? The Holy Shock Paladin probably isn't super interested in a 10% uh, cooldown reduction in Hammer of Justice. Um, most Reckoning, uh, uh, but a Reckoning Paladin would be. So this build is more uh, Reckoning Paladin focused, you could say, um, than, say, a Holy Shock build. But we're talking like minor, minor tweaks and minor, minor adjustments depending on your build. Uh, let's see here. Uh, HP is quite high now at 5,100. Uh, she used to be lower. What's going on? Oh, I guess I gained like a little bit of HP here, a little bit of HP there. Hmm. I'm trying to think here. She's 5,100 HP now uh, when you use a Wild Blossom Berry, but I'm confused. Because before she was like, um, I think she was like 4,800 and like 81, and I plus like, oh, okay, so I did the math wrong. She was actually 5,000 HP and not 5,100 uh, HP, my bad. Okay, so that math is a little off, um, but this math suddenly is a bit more accurate. You can scroll down here, you can see we only have 565 plus healing, but that's not bad. Basically, we lost uh, 45 plus healing, per, 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 pretty suck, uh, but we did gain about like 120 HP, and we did gain a fair bit of, of notable fire resist. Okay, um, but let's look at the plus healing. So uh, the other options, like that, so we literally just did the hybrid option uh, right here. So I would have to adjust this to be like 0, um, 1, 1. Um, the reason why I have to adjust these is because it's dwarf. Uh, okay, so we'll call that good. And then the other hybrid option is uh, option three equals, because that's the one we just basically did, uh, 5,100, and is that actually a dwarf? Did, did we mess with the dwarf? No, we did not mess with the dwarf. Okay. Uh, dwarves, have, dwarves have 30 more HP than the other paladins. Um, it sounds like a small thing, but it's not. <laughs> it is literally not a small thing at all. Be a dwarf, be a dwarf, be a dwarf. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so this is... So it would be 5,130 HP. Um, F fire resist went up to... That's not the right one. Fire resist is now 156, giving us some uh, pushback protection. 156... Uh, F... R. Uh, we also have... Alright, I'll pause the video here. Just get my ducks in a row. But we only have 5,550 healing, I want to say. No, it's 565, right? Mm, uh, 565. Yeah, 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 yeah. 565. Hey, yeah, it's bomb. Uh, 565. Okay, 565 uh, plus healing. Okay, cool. 
All right, so let's check it out. So this math is going to be a little off, um, but this is what the sacred shields are doing for option one and option two. You can basically see that right here. I'll make this a little bit bigger. So um, for op the option one paladin, which has by far the most uh, uh, base HP or standing HP, um, he's got 5,400 HP. Um, we multiply that if trying to get killed by spells. We multiply that by, um, we basically increase that by a 44%. We multiply that by 1.44 um, to give us our effective standing HP. And then we add Sacred Shield times 2, unless something has changed. She's not subject to the minus 30%. Uh, percent. Um, shields are not uh, subject to the minus 30% plus healing in, in, uh, in PvP. So Sacred Shield just does what Sacred Shield does. So uh, this is your Sacred Shield HP 462 with only 366 plus healing. By the time you get up to 600 plus healing, she's a 600 HP shield. Um, this would be a little bit less for the 5,100 HP Paladin, but this is the math uh, roughly for the 5,100 HP Paladin. Um, you can see by the time we're doing, uh, you basically double it for effective HP, right? So uh, because if you're, if you're assuming you're getting killed in a six second burst, you're gonna get, Sacred Shield's gonna pop twice, uh, basically. So she'll add 1,200 uh, HP to this. And you can see the standing HP between the, the Paladin builds is extremely close. Um, what all this is basically telling you is that very, very quickly, um, I, I, I actually do the math on builds that are not plus healing, but math in Classic World, uh, in Season of Discovery basically keeps bitching me, uh, bitch slapping me back to reality and insisting that I take plus healing gear. So uh, it is what it is. That's kind of one of the reasons why you're taking Lava Dredger. Um, she has, uh, she's got the stats. She's heavy stamina, heavy intellect. She's a, a decent, uh, speeded, uh, two-handed weapon. And she's, uh, got Chad, um, uh, plus healing on her. So away we go. So unclear which of these builds is better. Um, this build has no, uh, tier one on it whatsoever. This build has, uh, two set bonus, uh, tier one, uh, but can easily be modified to have, uh, four set bonus, uh, tier 1, let's look at her. Yeah, she can easily be modified to have a 4 set bonus tier 1. Um, not sure we want to do that. Increase critical strike chance with spells and attacks by 2%. That might be worth it uh, to get. Um, but every piece of every piece of tier 1 you put on your paladin is going to cause you to become uh, thicker and stronger. Um, specifically as far as... Uh, um... As far as durability is concerned, um, because she's very stat heavy, she's very stamina heavy, and she's very fire resist heavy. So you can see these two, the uh, swapping uh, these two pieces on, I literally just gained like you know 14 uh, fire resist, um, which is really really nice. Um, HP breakpoints for fire resist. Uh, soft cap is somewhere between 140 and 160, but you have to remember that uh, uh, opposing uh, enemy spellcasters can easily get uh, a magic pen. Um, on their on their gear, especially with the uh, Alterac Valley Ring having 20 spell power, uh, 20 spell pen on it. So you kind of have to assume that your enemy is going to be running around with at least 20 spell pen. Um, if they're if they're like super serious about it, they'll they'll be running around with 40 spell pen. But at that point, they really have to sacrifice some stuff. So your HP breakpoint for or your resistance breakpoint is about 160. Um, you can survive with 140 fire resist. Um, but 160 is is pretty much the break point. Anything above 100, 160, and you're going to feel really, really comfy. Uh, this build is designed to use improved concentration aura. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Uh, and yeah, this this is definitely the reckoning variant of this build because uh, the ten, minus 10 second cooldown um, on Hammer of Justice is basically the world. Um, makes you uh, far, 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 far deadlier uh, um, and also much needed to bridge the gap between uh, your two bubbles. Um, offensive, defensive, all that, all that good stuff. Um, Holy Shock cares less. So Holy Shock um, would be far more interested in swapping out uh, the four-set four PvP bonus and probably uh, um, chunking on uh, some more um, Tier 1, to be perfectly honest. There's more fire resist to be had here. So if I... Ugh, I know the breastplate, the tier 1 breastplate has fire resist on it. Yes, sir. Uh, 
I don't even think I care about what the plus healing is. You can see here you don't you gain a little bit of stamina, but you gain a lot of intellect. But it's really really we're just here for the fire resist. So we just go to Kachunk. And then whatever piece of PvP gear that we can remove um, that on tier two that's gonna give us like you know uh, plus stamina, a bonus stats, and more fire resist is what's gonna get removed. Lawbringer, shadow resist, yeah, shadow resist on pauldrons. I remember that. Shadow resist on pauldrons. Tier one is is a pretty heavy shadow resist suit. She's heavy fire, heavy shadow. Tollforge treads. The kid, the the pants. Okay, the pants might be going. Mm hmm. -hmm. Uh, a shadow resist. Uh oh. Uh oh. Spaghettio. Shadow resist. Shadow resist. And shadow resist. Okay. So the last hope here is the helm. I'm pretty sure. I if I recall correctly, the helm has fire resist. No. The helm might have shadow resist. I think she got shadow and fire. I can't remember. Law bring her helm me. Let's do it. Uh, yeah, fire resist. Okay, cool. Scroll down. So it would definitely be the crown that you're replacing. Okay, judgment of light, judgment of wisdom. I don't know, man. Maybe you want to go for the critical strike. No, you're a holy shock pal. You don't want to go for the critical strike chance. Hard to say. Yeah, judgment of light, judgment of the crusader. Um, but you get the idea. So you swap out the pieces of PvP gear. Um, specifically... Uh, tar, uh, uh, with the pieces that have fire resist on them. So if I scroll down here now, my fire resist is damn near 180. Um, you're going to be soft cap on fire resist without breaking a sweat. doesn't even matter if they have a spell pen. Um, at that point, absolutely fucking terrifying. Your HP has, has gone up almost another 100 um, hit points. Um, everything here is great, except when we look at the plus healing. Like that's where things are going to get a little painful. We've lost um, another um, 50 plus healing. Um, not the greatest thing in the world, but this thing is still a war in a can. Um, 5,200 effective HP, um, absolute war in a can. I don't even think this is the dwarf. I think this is the, uh, the human. Yeah. Um, disgusting. Really, really good. So, so we're clear here. You've got, um, uh, soul forge bracers cause there was no plus healing bracers and soul forge boots. Okay. Um, your Lawbringer bits are anything with fire resist, so that's uh, uh, belt, uh, gloves, helm, and chest. Yep. And then your uh, PvP uh, 2 set is uh, legs and shoulders. Okay, cool. And of course you have Dragon Blood Cape, you got a Tidal Loop Charm because I just wanted more fire resist in this damn thing. At this point you might uh, take off the Tidal Loop Charm because you're a little bit excessive on the fire resist. And potentially replace it with uh, something else. Even a cauterizing band looks really good here. So you can like uh, pick up some of that uh, plus healing that you lost. Uh, Dark Eye and a Ring if you want to go even uh, thicker um, on the stamina. Uh, but the Ring of Entropy might be really good for a Holy Shock Paladin. Uh, but again, Fire Resist is, is really, really hard to part with. But if I click Button and I go Ring of Entropy, you can see that we're back up on, on the plus healing again. Uh, and our spell power is back down to meh. <laughs> our, our fire resist is back down to, yeah, somewhat kind of serviceable. Um, yeah, good stuff. A uh, lot of gearing options. What's nice is you don't really need tier 1 all that much. Uh, you also don't need uh, PvP gear um, all that much in the grand scheme of things. A lot of really nice options. Lava Dredger is just stupidly good. Um, she's even better for Reckoning Paladins, but even like, you know, Holy Shock Paladins not going to... Not going to cry too terribly much if, if they're running around with Lava Dredger because um, she it just has fire resist on it. Oh, the other thing that really uh, uh, made me go qua uh, when I saw it was uh, a hammer. Uh, the Sulfur and Hammer is buffed. Buffed to the point where it's actually really, really good. Um, to the point where if you don't have Rag, this thing is still really nuts because it's got... 10 strength, 10 stamina, 30 fire resist in the damn thing. It's got a, a decent um, proc on hit. It, it's, it's got everything. So um, even if you don't have a ha hand of rag, uh, the sulfur and hammer is actually really, really good. Uh, you put on a sulfur and hammer here, and at that point, you're just like, all right, well, well I guess we'll just have um, insane fire resist at this point. I don't like it because your HP drops too low. So anyways, that's what I'm seeing here so far. Very, very interesting uh, what you can and cannot do. 
um, what's going to dictate what is best, like, you know, which of the, of the gearing options is best is if you need, is if the game forces you to need more HP. So basically what's happening here is that you become a, in totality, you become a better and more efficient paladin if you can get away with having less HP. But if you cannot get away with having less HP, then you're basically going to force to be uh, whatever the hell that is. The highest HP build had the lowest plus healing, and the lowest HP build has the highest plus healing. Um, and so you're probably best off like with that, like you know, that nice little middle ground where you know you're sitting at about five thousand, uh, or my bad, five hundred and fifty uh, plus healing. Blah 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 blah. There's other weird things here, like uh, we do have pl uh, a thirty plus healing enchant to uh, gloves. We do have uh, plus 55 uh, healing to weapon. Um, we do have plus 70, uh, plus 7 stamina to boots um, because most of these paladin builds, including shock eye, uh, they do go deep enough into the ret tree that it might is kind of worth it to get pursuit of justice. Um, you can get, you know, and you're looking at, at it being opportunity cost against, well, do I pick up seal of command? Do I get a plus 2% increased critical strike chance? Or do I pick up pursuit of justice? Have the increased mounted movement speed. And on top of that, um, uh, pick up like, you know, plus, uh, plus 70 hit points. Um, since hit points, hit points are precious. So you typically want to pick up the, the, the bonus hit points. I'll have to do a video on where to get discombobulator ray. Um, having 8% increased movement speed while you're mounted is absolutely fucking insane for PvP uh, because it lets you run people down in the open world uh, while mounted and then you get to uh, discombobulate or raid them off their mount and uh, start basically just initiate. Uh, you become an open world PvP initiator um, if, if you want to. So you can run away from just about anything. You can chase people down. It's actually really, 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 really good for um, open world PvP. I really, really like it. Um, unclear if Pursuit of Justice affects Divine Steed. Also unclear if I can discombobulate or raise somebody off of Divine Steed. If Pursuit of Justice does, in fact, affect Divine Steed, um, then it's just, yeah, we're taking it. Like, why wouldn't I get an extra 8% movement speed on top of my 100% uh, movement speed with Divine Steed? Like, why would I not do that? Um, anyways, I'll end the video here, and uh, Deus Vault Boys.